Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description below where you will find links to anything that I mention in this video, including how to find my patterns to knit up for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group, and how to support me on Patreon. As you saw by the title, I was like, help! I've lost my knitting mojo and I want to talk to you about how to get it back. I'm not saying that I personally have lost my knitting mojo. I mean, I haven't been knitting a lot, but that's because I've been having problems with the evil hand. <laughs> Um, it's not evil, but I've been having some pain issues. A little update on that. I have gone to the doctor, had x-rays. It is not uh, early onset osteoarthritis, which is a good thing, but it also had the appointment was a lot of the doctor wiggling things and going, hmm, hmm, and not really being sure what's going on. So I have an MRI scheduled and we are going to get to the bottom of it. Until then, I'm just going to talk about knitting a lot. And, you know, I love talking about knitting with y'all. So that's great. So what happens when you lose your knitting mojo, when you lose your motivation, when you really aren't feeling that passion for your knitting anymore? How do you get it back or revive it or, you know, get back into the swing of things? And I have some suggestions. None of them are like 100% foolproof, but it's some things that you can try to do that might, you know, light that flame again. I've written them down so I can try to stay a little bit focused in this video. As you all know, I tend to be very stream of consciousness <laughs> and sometimes I get a little sidetracked, but I'll do my best. So uh, one thing I really would encourage you to do is if you haven't watched my what kind of knitter are you one and two videos is to think about what motivates your knitting. Um, if you are a process or a project knitter, if what you enjoy is the process of knitting or if what motivates you is having that thing, because knowing, uh, knowing your motivation will help you figure out how to, you know, get that going again. So something I suggest that is more towards process oriented people. If you're a project oriented person, it might not work for you. So having a better understanding and getting in touch with your inner motivations on why you knit in the first place is one way that you can get started in the getting your groove back process. So after you have a better idea of that, um, something that I might suggest, if you are the type of person who has a stash of yarn, get reacquainted with your stash. Take some time, pull it all out, arrange it on the floor or on a table or on your bed. I personally do like dumping it on the bed and maybe just laying down and rolling around in it. <laughs> that could be fun. But go through it and revisit these beautiful pieces. I mean, the yarn itself is beautiful and inspiring and looking through it and seeing what inspired you to purchase that yarn in the first place. You may be the kind of person who buys yarns with a project in mind. Well, take some time and revamp your stash and try to decide, okay, and look at it and say, oh, I bought this yarn with the intention of making this project. And it might be, oh, I totally forgot about that project. I would really like to do it. And bang, you're back on track. Or you might be like, you know what? I bought this for this project, but this project really isn't doing it for me anymore. And that's okay. Just because at one point in time, you thought that that yarn was a great match for a particular project. It's okay if you fall out of love with either the yarn or the project or just the combination of the two. So maybe if you have some yarn that was mentally slotted for a project, you, your motivation is gone because you no longer really like the that pairing and it's okay to break them up you you can play dating game with your yarn all you want you are not married to what you thought a year ago when you purchased that yarn so go through your stash uh 
get reacquainted with it. Find the love, the color, the softness, whatever it was about that yarn that you liked in the first place. Look and see what projects you might have had in mind for those or just pick out, you know, oh, I even forgot I had this yarn. Pull it out, have it, and then maybe find a project to feature that yarn. And maybe that will give you the motivation and bring that love back. Or if you're the kind of person who gets satisfaction out of deciding something doesn't belong in your life anymore, put it aside, create a new box or a new bag of, you know what, this is yarn that I'm going to de-stash. This is yarn that doesn't fit into my knitting worldview anymore and I want it out of my house. Um, I'm sure it's beautiful yarn and I'm sure someone else will want it, but making that decision to get it out of your life frees you from any obligation you might have had that, you know what, I can't buy this new yarn because I have this yarn already. But you know what, if you don't love that yarn that you bought three years ago anymore, you're not obligated to knit with it. Uh, there are plenty of sites where you can sell them or you can hold this little stash, the to be ejected stash aside for a suggestion I have later down the road. So my first suggestion is get reacquainted with your stash. Spend some quality time with your stash, if that is something that you have, and maybe in it, in digging through all of the color and softness, you might find your knitting mojo in there. Now, um, if you are not a stash person, if you don't have yarn, or if you've gone through your yarn and culled a lot of it, the next suggestion I have is visit your local yarn store. Now, you can do this in person if you have one, or you can do it virtually. I would encourage you, even if you can't get to your virtual, you, you can't get to your local yarn store because of current uh, quarantine restrictions, most yarn stores that are trying to make it work are really working on vamping up their online presence. They are making their websites better. You might check and see if they have a Facebook group or a Facebook page. Personally, the local yarn store I work at, one of the things I'm doing is every Wednesday at noon, I do a one hour what's hot in the shop Facebook live. And I talk about new yarns and I talk about projects that you might want to do. And I try to make it like you're visiting the yarn shop because visiting a yarn shop, you can see beautiful new yarns and you can see samples that the yarn store has knit up and you can get inspiration from that and that really can get the juices flowing again and bring your mojo back so that is you know visiting a yarn store being visiting it virtually or in real life can really help you find that path again and it's super fun to do but as I said you can do it online you can see if they have I know again my store has a Thursday night knit night that you can attend via zoom maybe check in and see if you can find some online classes if you can't attend them in person I know that Vogue Knitting Live has been doing online classes taking classes browsing through yarn stores finding new and interesting or revisiting old, you know, things that you used to love, these can get you going again. It can get the, get, get the, the little gears spinning in your head again and back on the making stuff with knitting train. I don't know how many more analogies I can come up with. I'm trying to not say the same thing over and over, but they're getting a little far-fetched. Um, but yes, and it's really, and uh, you know, these videos are up forever and we're not always going to be in quarantine. So going to your local yarn store, squishing the yarn, oh, just looking at it and feeling it. And that yarn may speak to you or seeing samples that other people have done that the yarn store is showing off can really inspire you and get you back into the swing of things. Um, and, you know, visit. Another thing is if you have particularly uh, yarn brands that you love, like Anzula or Malabrigo or Manos del Uruguay or Madeleine Tosh or any of these amazing, the Fiber Seed, any of these amazing 
yarns, go visit that yarn company's website. See what their new colors are. See if they have new products. And you might be able to find something that inspires you or just makes that light that, that switch flip and get you excited about knitting something again. They frequently will have recommendations for um, projects with their yarn because who knows better how that yarn is going to work than the people who actually make it. I love Space Cadet and I know she sends out an amazing newsletter that is always full of great inspiration and they even have kits and things. So go on to your favorite yarn company's website and sign up for their email newsletter and that'll be like inspiration coming directly to you that you can read or not read as it pops up and that can get you back on track. So Go through your stash, visit your local yarn store or yarn company's website. And then the third thing is get with your knitting buddies. Okay, if you don't have them, find knitting buddies. Go to a knit night. As I said, uh, a good yarn has a Thursday night knit night. They have virtual ones, there are Zoom ones. Find a crew to run with and they can be your inspiration. There are all kinds of groups on Facebook. There's the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group. You can come over with us and say, hey, anybody wanna show me what um, you're working on and you can see what other people are making and that might kick things off for you. There are other knitting groups on Facebook. There's Ravelry and there's a community on Ravelry. There's so many communities. Go to your favorite social media location and see what you can find. Go on Instagram, go on Pinterest, search for hashtag knitting. <laughs> <laughs> or hashtag cables or hashtag lace or whatever it is that you love to do or have in the past loved to do or maybe always wanted to do and fill your senses with the beauty and excitement of knitting and it, it, you'll get full of it and then you'll be excited to knit again. Uh, when we're not in quarantine, go to your knit, you know, if you have an in-person, if you have a guild, a start a knitting group, even if you don't have something to knit, still go to your knit night. And when you get there, say, hey, does anyone have a project with ends I can weave in? Because if you're not feeling like motivated to start or do something, you can always help someone else. See, you know, um, like my knitting group in Atlanta, we had a Ravelry group where we talked about our Friday night meetups. And if I were there and I really had nothing to do, I could go on to that group. It could be a Facebook group, Ravelry group, whatever, and say, hey, I don't have a project for Friday night. Does anyone have a sweater that needs to be seamed? Does anyone have ends that need to be woven in? Offer to help someone else finish a project that their feet have been dragging on because it'll get your hands moving. And sometimes I find it easier to motivate myself to help or finish something else for someone else because I'm doing it for someone else than something that I have laying around. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I have a shawl uh, behind this uh, screen that y'all haven't seen that I finished knitting and I haven't blocked yet. And I need to block it. I need to block it. I need to write the pattern and I need to get it photographed and I need to get it out there. But I just have not found the motivation to do it. Now, if it was for someone else, I could probably find it because for me doing something for someone else, if I committed to that <laughs> is kind of more motivating than doing things for myself. I don't know if anyone of y'all can relate to that, but it is what it is. So how long have I been talking? Whoop. Getting to just about the right time. I try to keep my videos right around 15 to 20 minutes because I don't want y'all to get bored and I don't want me to get bored. <laughs> Because really, I can just go off on tangents and you're like, what was this video even about? This video about was about finding your knitting mojo. So the three categories that I can recommend if you've lost that motivation, if you're looking to reinvigorate it, is reacquaint yourself with your stash, uh, visit your local yarn store and yarn company websites and the store itself and get in touch with a group of knitters. Oh, 
I told you. So that yarn, okay, this is something that is super fun to do with your knit and crew. That yarn earlier that I told you, you've decided you've fallen out of love with it and it's got to go. What you can do is have a yarn swap. How fun is that? You could do it via Zoom right now. You can do it in person when that is a viable option. And what you do is everybody in your group gets goes through their stash and finds the skeins of yarn that they've fallen out of love with and everybody brings it. And what you can do is either just sell them to each other or swap them. The, when we've had success doing this, um, you do both. Okay, come being willing to just, ex you exchange. Now, whether you exchange it for other yarn or exchange it for money is up to you. But it's a really great way to refresh your stash and to get those, um, get those skeins that really aren't fulfilling any needs for you into the hands of someone who loves it and wants to do uh, something with it. Or maybe just it just needs to live at their house for a little while until it finds its special purpose. Um, but it's a lot of fun because you can get together, you can have some snacks, you can have some refreshments and you can go through each other's stash and, uh, see what you like or what you might have your eyeball in. And you can do some even Steven swapsies, or you can, you know, just flat out say, Hey, I'll give you five bucks for that or 50 bucks, depending on how awesome your yarn is. And that can be a lot of fun. Right now, you could totally do this via Zoom. Somebody set up the Zoom call and you just show off your yarn to the camera. And then you can either, especially if you're local, you can just do porch drop-offs or you could do this on a much larger scale and be mailing stuff. So that is a little aside that I wanted to give to the stash. And again, getting new yarn might inspire you and you can even i've seen this done i've never done it personally you can do project swaps unloved projects a project that you've gotten halfway through and you're sick of it um swap it out <laughs> you can you, somebody else you can pick up where someone else left off and that can be a lot of fun you have to match gauge if it's a garment, so that maybe doesn't, but if somebody started a shawl and you want to finish it or a cow or a hat, that can be a lot of fun. So you would have to make your own rules regarding what your swap is, but the swap can contain uh, unfinished objects in them. So, so unloved, unfinished, it could be a whole lot of fun. So I hope that if you have found yourself in the position of losing your motivation to knit and wanting to get it back, that some of these suggestions that I have made might help you find your way back to happiness and with yarn and love on your needles. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.